This is the light bulb in my chandelier. And I could see it about that clearly through the H16 viewfinder and a lens. Well, this is what I used. And I had a lens here. This is the 16 millimeter lens. The back of this lens is the very same depth as the one on the Keystone camera. This is the lens on the Keystone camera. It's a 25 millimeter lens, but the back of it has the threads exactly the same as the 16 millimeter Switar. Here are the two lenses kissing. Here you can see that both lenses are the same. Now the 25 millimeter Switar is different. It sticks out a lot more. This is the lens opening for the Keystone camera and the 25mm Switar does not fit, but the 16mm Switar does. None of the Keystone cameras have a deep lens mount and none of the Keystone lenses have a long part that sticks out like the Switar. The long 75mm lens on the Bolex camera has a short protrusion of the threads so it will fit onto the Keystone cameras. It's just this 25 millimeter lens that has the long part. You could easily see the extra depth that the Bolex camera has on its thread mounts. What I do to check the focus scale on the lens is to put it onto the Bolex camera and look through it at a light bulb. They all have some kind of writing on them, although some bulbs may be easier to look at than others. I have a desk lamp that I have used in the past. I'll try to set that up. This Elgeet 25 millimeter lens that was on a Keystone A15 Newport Deluxe camera did not focus where it said it would. I set it on two feet and I looked at a light bulb through it with this installed onto the Bolex H16 camera. Looked through the eye level focus finder and it was at three feet that it focused when the lens was on two feet. So I wrapped it up in cellophane and put it into a box of junk parts and things so I don't use it. I have another one exactly like it that does focus at two feet. So until I figure out how to get this collimated correctly, and uh, it might be worth doing because all the functions work very smoothly. Uh, I have five other lenses to test maybe six or more to test. A lot of them are wide angle and they don't focus but some of them do focus. Others are like this. There are all sorts of different shapes. One of them is a three inch lens and I've never used it. It's never been used. This attachment will be put on the Bolex H16 and I'll set it up on a box and slide it forward and backward looking at the light bulb in a desk lamp. It's set on the closest distance which is four feet. It actually goes a little bit farther closer than that, but I have it on the line for four. And the light bulb is in there. And the camera is almost exactly four feet away. And I can see the filament in the bulb. Pretty much like that.
So that's a very rough way of doing it, but that's close enough and I can tell that that lens is good to use the way it is. There's a whole bunch of others, but I just wanted to uh, get started and see if one lens works. But this ruler is great. It's a Stanley and you could extend it a long ways and it doesn't bend. It might extend six feet and not bend, but most lenses will focus at four feet. The closest appears to be three and a half feet. A two inch lens is good indoors taking portraits so you're not right in somebody's face and you can still get a nice tight portrait from the other side of the room or you know fairly close. So it's good to know where the exact focus is. This lens has a setting for one foot. That, I assume, is the one. Because the next number is one and a half. Now this is about where it focused. I was almost inside the shade. Right there. That's hardly a foot. It moves about that much and stays in pretty good focus. A very careful setup would need to be made with a Keystone camera in order to get proper framing and focus using these lenses. First you would have to know the focal distance and set that with a tape measure and then the actual framing you would have to have centered very nicely. So the Bolex animation stand might be very good for that. <laughs> 